water is a shared value. And that's something that we found in our surveys and people have found around the country and world. People want clean water both in their drinking water and in surface water in lakes and rivers. Where we start to see differences is in the role of government that people think is appropriate to achieve those clean water outcomes. And this could be support or opposition to different kinds of policies from taxation and regulation to new incentives and technology. We've seen a number of changes that have made it more difficult to achieve water quality outcomes. In agriculture, we have increased concentration of livestock and manure. In urban communities, we've seen an increase in spread of urban development into rural areas. And in precipitation, we've seen an increase in large storm events that have brought a lot of nutrients into the lakes and rivers. Because of all these changing factors, water quality managers are having to run faster and faster just to stay in the same place. And one of the things that we wanted to do was try to address what were the policy and governance challenges that could be addressed and could be improved to help clean up the state of the lakes. One way we can start to address water quality challenges is to increasingly link our actions to results. We expect results from government, from nonprofit organizations, and from industry, and that's no different in water quality management. So we've seen an increasing shift toward performance-based policy in which people are paid not for installing certain practices like grass waterways, but for actually achieving certain measurable outcomes in reducing phosphorus or nitrogen runoff from their properties. One of the things that we've been doing is to understand how performance measures are negotiated and developed uh, through this process that can take years for, pe to, for people to come to agreement on what performance management systems they want to use. And one of the things that we found is that these performance measures are really affected by the governance networks and the political conflict that comes into water quality management, and that these shape performance measures and how we as a public will understand the results uh, that are coming out of these programs. One of the things that we've seen in this watershed is the adaptive management option, which is one of Wisconsin's tools for achieving Clean Water Act results on the landscape. One of the things in the adaptive management option that's unique is that the sewerage district and municipalities can pay non-point sources like farmers and other municipalities who are in a position to be able to improve water quality. So what this means is there's no one-size-fits-all solution that's going to work in every place at every time. What's amazing about this watershed is the ability and the motivation to innovate and to continue to improve performance as we learn new things. And this really points to the need for fostering that innovation into the future. As we move increasingly toward solutions that are not just about government, but about partnerships between public and private, it's important that we retain important elements of transparency and accountability that allow us as a public to understand the results of those programs. And this really points to a much broader issue that the ways that we shape water quality governance and the ways that we shape our society overall are not a fixed inheritance from the past. These are things that are continually shaped by each generation as they set out to say what's important, what do they value, what kinds of trade-offs are they willing to make, and how can they achieve the kinds of environmental and social goals that are important for each generation.